Good afternoon, everyone. So my today's topic for seminar is concept of anti-psychiatry. Hi, my name is Akash Chaudhary. I'm second year resident in Department of Psychiatry, Subhati Medical College. My today's presentation is going to comprise of introduction, the definition for anti-psychiatry, history regarding anti-psychiatric movements, the dogmas surrounded for anti-psychiatry and its critical analysis, impact of anti-psychiatric movement on current psychiatric practices, and at the end, the take-home message. So the debate in which there is proponents for and opponents against a topic always leads to a healthy discussion about the topic. The value of such debates is important for the growth of any discipline of science. And yet it would be unthinkable to be dealing with anti-cardiologist or anti-pediatricians movement. So the same yardstick is never measured with other specialties. It's always psychiatry that comes under scrutiny. The fact that anti-psychiatry has existed is noteworthy. Hence today's discussion is very important. So what is anti-psychiatry? Anti-psychiatry is a movement based on the view that psychiatric treatment is often more damaging than helpful to the patients. In 18th century, part of the progressive age of enlightenment, so-called a moral treatment movement challenged the harsh, pessimistic, somatic, body-based and restraint-based approaches. Anti-psychiatry, a term first used by David Cooper in 1967. He was a South African psychiatrist working in Britain. He defined a movement that vocally challenged mainstream psychiatric fundamental claims and practices. He argued that the political context of psychiatry and its patient had to be highlighted and radically changed. The political context will be further explained in the presentation. Thomas Sars, a psychiatrist Thomas Sars argued that mental illness is an inherently co incoherent combination of a medical and a psychological concept. He opposed the use of psychiatry to forcibly detain, treat or excuse what he saw as mere deviance from societal norms or moral conduct. He wrote a book, The Myth of Mental Illness, Sash controversial 1916 book with the same name. He collaborated with Scientology to form the Citizens Commission of Human Rights. So a brief overview about Scientology, it's the latest religion which has been coined in America. They have their own churches which are present throughout the world, known as Scientology churches. The most prominent personality that are associated with these churches are Tom Cruise and John Travolta. They are actively proponent of anti-psychiatric movements. The argument that what the celebrities give is that the patients are over-diagnosed with the attention deficit hyperactive disorders and they have been over-medicated. And there's nothing such thing as called depression. These things can be treated due to hormonal imbalances. And if they exercise regularly, then they can come out of these uh, illnesses as so they regard which are not through just by basically changing their basic lifestyles. The Citizen Commission of Human Rights. In 1969, the Citizen Commission of Human Rights was founded by Scientology to expose the evils of psychiatry. Attacks on psychiatry and psychiatrists by Scientology and the Citizens Commission of Human Rights have continued and indeed have increased with many celebrities joining hands. One striking example is the Hollywood actor Tom Cruise. R.D. Lang started his writing in 1960 and saw mental disorders or at least schizophrenia as an understandable and even normal response of sensitive individuals to a mad world. What he was trying to say was basically the individuals were more sensitive to this cruel world and they were acting out in a certain way because they were not able to express themselves more openly. Emphasize the importance of freedom and subjectivity over determinism and believe that cure would occur when patients felt free to make choices. It was more dependent. You can't control the fate of the patient. So there's no point in holding back the patient and forcing them to take treatment. Rather, it should be the patient's choice what treatment he wants and what the outcome may be. Then Franco Basalia, he was an Italian psychiatrist, started refusing to bind patients to their beds in the lunatic asylum of Gorizia. He also abolished any isolation method. From the initi initiative started a wide theoretical and practical debate all over Italy. Insisted that the inveterate stereotypes of madness was actually the consequence of institutional conditions, but not a real danger, which the walls of mental hospital had been required to contain. Michel Foucault, French historian of ideas and philosopher, he stated that madness suffers from both a conceptual exclusion 
and the physical exclusion and this reflects a moral condemnation according to him we basically ostracize the patients both uh, socially and both physically and this leads to more uh, aggravation of the symptoms as we are labeling the patient as mad his book history of madness sustains this argument the moral fault occurs because madness corresponds to a radical choice to reject humanity and the human community in favor of animality then the sociologists give their chips Irving Goffman and Thomas Sheff in his book Asylums Goffman psychiatrists use asylums as brainwashing machines to control disturbing individuals in Thomas Sheff's labeling theory individuals are labeled as deviant or mentally ill because they have isolated social norms or their behavior is what a society considers unacceptable behavior it was argued by chef that most chronic mental illness is at least part a social role now this is very interesting known as drapetomania one remarkable example so this is another the political context that we were talking about before one remarkable example of psychiatric diagnosis being used to reinforce cultural bias and oppressed dissidents is the diagnosis of drapetomania in the us prior to the american civil war physicians such as samuel a cartwright diagnosed some slaves with drapetomania a mental illness in which the slave possessed an irrational desire for freedom and a tendency to try to escape they were diagnosed under this pathology that if they are willing to escape and want freedom they are mentally ill because they are slaves so in 1970s formation of the mental patients union led to by the so called survivors of psychiatry they said basically they came out of uh, the influence from the psychiatry and were the survivors of the cruel practices that they were practiced by the psychiatrists which also gained its geographical and ideological influence with the world network of users and survivors of psychiatry being at the forefront of the movement recently in being joined by human rights activists including lawyers who are primarily opposed to any active or passive violation of human rights including involuntary hospitalization and treatment so basically the flow chart of anti psychiatrists is divided into mental illness does not exist or mental illness are reactions to unbearable stresses in life given by respective scientists four dogmas of anti psychiatry or from where th this all originates so the first the essential definition dogma narrow materialism an essential definition of disease or illness according to shaz uses the term more or less anonymously for shaz the necessity and sufficient condition for the ascription of disease is the demonstrable presence of some bodily abnormality either anatomical or physiological unless and until according to shaz if the patient does not have any anatomical disturbances or any biological deficits in the body he didn't consider it as an illness the critical argument against this dogma is mental illness has substantial suffering and incapacity according to harrison's principles of internal medicine which describes the concept of disease as the clinical method has its object the collections of accurate data concerning all the diseases to which human beings are subject namely all condition that limit life in its powers enjoyment and duration which automatically automatically negates the so called theory that mental illness does not exist unless and until there are no anatomical or physiological changes the second dogma or the more the diagnostic casualty dogma self validating diagnosis this dogma holds that an any legitimate scientifically based set of disease criteria must be grounded in causation or etiology and not consist merely of signs and symptoms so basically if unless and there is a root etiology for any condition of a psychiatric illness it can't be considered as an illness according to this dogma criticism against that this dogma is the history of medical practices replete with examples of syndromes with example incapacitating headaches known as trigeminal neuralgia or autonomic cephalgias which don't have any clear cut etiologies but still are still given medications accordingly illness is medically and biologically real without knowing the specific cause or pathophysiology of that illness the social construction dogma psychiatric disorders have no independent reality apart from subjective musings of psychiatrists the criticism against this dogma is take the example of cancer designation cancer cell is the socially constructed product of intense human discussion debate and medical conventions the dsm diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia like all medical categories are socially constructed 
but the immense suffering and incapacity caused by the disease of schizophrenia is very very real the objectivity dogma the diagnosis listed in the major psychiatric diagnostic manuals have not yet been linked with any sort of physical test or other biological markers apart from dementias and so like unlike the rest of the medicine psychiatric diagnosis do not have pathophysiological correlates and no independent data is available to the diagnostician to support their subjective assessment of diagnosis criticism against this dogma is by most definitions objective evidence is not limited to lab tests and biomarkers as psychiatrists we carry out detailed mental status examinations perform limited neurological examination interview family members evaluate school records and order a variety of ancillary studies or supplementary studies such as neuropsychological testing in performing a differential diagnosis psychiatrists routinely obtain lab studies brain imaging and other independent data so it is not just based on our own figment of imagination we are very well researched regarding the before diagnosing a patient what are the challenges that we regularly face is the reliability of psychiatric diagnosis the questionable effectiveness and harm associated with psychiatric medications the failure of psychiatry to demonstrate any disease treatment mechanism for psychiatric medication effects legal concerns about equal human rights and civil freedom being nullified by the presence of a diagnosis so what next the nature and enormity of this challenge is evident and it yet needs to be met with the levelly and meaningfully as possible labeling is not likely to help nor can the psychiatrists permit themselves to feel demoralized or threatened competence and evidence base for the practice of psychiatry psychiatrists and their allies the patients and their families who avail of psychiatric service do not see themselves as survivors but beneficiaries could do well as to understand the criticism emanating from these anti psychiatry groups so the impact of anti psychiatric movement on current psychiatric practices are as such shift of focus for the large mental institution to the provision of care in the community medical establishment seems to have departed from the social model and is now more interested in bio biological theorizing believing that the organic model is likely to be the one that offers better understanding of nature of mental illness and serve the need of the mentally ill the take home message the medical discipline of psychiatry is still a work in progress despite many advances in the past 50 years we continue to rely on diagnostic framework that lacks a comprehensive bio psychosocial foundation and clear implication for treatment criticism of psychiatry aimed at ameliorating these shortcomings should be met with open minded appreciation but anti psychiatry fallacies and baseless attacks are aimed at delegitimizing and ultimately destroying psychiatry we need to push back forcefully against the dogmas discussed in the article while also attending closely to psychiatry's responsible critics and most of all attending to the urgent need of our patients these are my references